Herpes simplex virus, HSV, commonly referred to as herpes, is a transmittable infection that affects millions of people globally. There are two types of herpes, HSV1, oral herpes, and HSV2, genital herpes. The disease is a significant public health concern, as the World Health Organization estimated that 66.6% .6 of the world's population under age 50 is living with HSV1, and 13.2% is living with HSV2. The prevalence of the disease is highest in Sub-Saharan Africa and Southeast Asia, However, it is also common in the United States and Canada. Research indicates that in Canada, 14% of individuals between the age of 14 and 59 have HSV2. Having HSV can be anxiety arousing, it can be stigmatizing and stressful during sexual relationships. HSV infections may be symptomatic with visible blisters or ulcers, or asymptomatic with no visible symptoms. As most herpes infections are asymptomatic, monitoring and preventing further spreading is challenging. HSV-1 is primarily transmitted through oral-to-oral -oral contact, whereas HSV-2 is typically a sexually transmitted infection. HSV-2 is more common among women than men because transmission occurs through penile-vaginal intercourse, which transmits infections more easily in women. More specifically, herpes sheds from oral or genital mucosa or skin, including herpes lesions, mucosal surfaces, and genital or oral secretions. Viral particles from shedding enter the new host cells and begin to replicate to propagate infection. HSV-1 causes oral or ocular blisters or inflammation, whereas HSV-2 typically causes genital lesions. So both men and women may encounter blisters or sores on their anus, buttocks, and thighs. Men may also notice blisters on their penis and stratum, and women may notice them on their vagina and vulva. Early on, the sores appear as reddened regions and cause a tingling sensation and feeling of heat. These sores then fill with clear fluid and may become painful ulcers that eventually crust over and scab like a cut. Individuals may also have pain when urinating, have flu-like symptoms, and tender lymph nodes in the groin. In the latent stage, infected individuals are asymptomatic for a short period. This stage is often followed by recurrent episodes which involve outbreaks that are milder than the initial episode. In addition to typical symptoms, there are distinct effects for vulnerable populations and rare complications. Infants exposed to HSV during delivery may acquire neonatal herpes, a potentially fatal condition that can cause permanent neurologic disability. This risk increases when the mother gets HSV during the late pregnancy stage, especially if it's her first time getting infected because her immune system isn't ready for the infection. Immunocompromised individuals may present more severe symptoms and higher episode frequency. Severe symptoms may include meningeal encephalitis, which is a brain infection and disseminated infection, an infection that spreads from a localized area to other areas. An initial diagnosis of HSV begins when an individual presents with the known symptoms of the infection, including active ulcers and blisters. Once the physician identifies symptoms, patients are asked to complete a culture test or a polymerase chain reaction to confirm if there are viral cultures or HSV DNA present in their bodies. If a patient does not have active ulcers, but believes they may have been infected by HSV in the past, blood tests may be completed to look for antibodies. These antibodies are proteins that are produced by the immune system of infected individuals to combat infection. Therefore, their presence indicates a bodily reaction to a previous infection. These tests may generate a false negative during the initial episode of infection because the body hasn't produced enough antibodies yet. For this reason, diagnosing HSV in a timely manner is important to allow individuals to be informed and educated about their infection, allowing them to prevent the spreading of the virus. If an individual is infected with HSV, they will remain infected for the rest of their life because there is currently no cure. Upon presentation of a first episode, the affected site should be cleaned with saline and analgesic gel such as lidocaine should be applied to reduce pain. Additionally, Secondary bacterial infections should be examined and managed appropriately before treating the HSV. Recurrent herpes can also be treated with supportive therapy, which includes saline bathing, treatment of secondary bacterial infections, but also counseling of sexual behavior to prepare the infected individual to manage their own health. Physicians can then prescribe antiviral medications to prevent or reduce the duration of viral outbreaks. The primary antiviral medications prescribed include acyclovir, famcyclovir, and valacyclovir. These medications work by interfering with viral proteins that are responsible for replicating viral DNA in the body. This prevents the multiplication of viruses in the body, and by doing so, minimizes the harmful effects of infection. 
Suppressive antiviral therapy uses antiviral medications to reduce the frequency of recurring episodes of HSV. This treatment is very effective with studies reporting a reduction in episode frequency by 70 to 80%. Since HSV is spread through physical interactions such as kissing and sexual intercourse, the most effective way to prevent getting infected is to abstain from these activities unless you've been tested and the other individual has clearly indicated that they've been tested as well. Other recommendations include one, getting tested regularly for sexually transmitted diseases to re receive adequate treatment based on your needs and provide accurate information about your disease status to others. Two, clearly informing individuals you engage in sexual activity with about your infection so that they are able to make informed decisions. Three, using latex condoms to reduce the risk of contracting genital herpes from sexual intercourse as a precautionary measure, even if both parties are asymptomatic. And four, avoiding engagement in oral, anal, or vaginal sex during periods when active HSV lesions are present in any of the individuals involved. Long-term prevention requires patient education interventions to ensure that individuals with HSV do not spread the disease to others and are aware of how to prevent outbreaks. It is important for institutions to make antiviral medicine more accessible for all individuals and invest in vaccines and topical microbicides to discover more efficient ways to prevent the disease.